What's up everybody? Today's video is sponsored by PowerDot. As many of you can tell, I'm pretty tired. That's because I've been pushing my body very hard over the last few years to achieve the world champion status of world's strongest man. But my body's taken a toll. So now, before I go into world's strongest man this year, I've been putting a lot of focus on my rehab. That is a lot of motions uh, that focus on stability, mobility, healing up my tendons, and now the power dot, which I'm gonna be very excited to show you guys uh, how it works and how I'm gonna use it to help me with my recovery alongside all the rehab motions that I do before I do my lifts every single day. Enjoy. So the first motion that I'm gonna be doing is hip airplanes. Um, you can do these assisted or unassisted. Assisted is mostly used for mobilizing your hips for external hip rotation and internal hip rotation. Uh, but because I've kind of graduated past that and I have the mobility I need in my hips now, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna be focusing more on the stability portion. That means unassisted. So the assisted hip airplane it just starts like this, where you're holding onto an object, whatever it might be. Your legs up behind you, your stabilizing leg is straight. You try to bring your hip down to your knee as far as possible, stretching the outside of the stabilizing leg. For so hold that for five seconds, then I twist open as much as I can, trying to push this hip through, stretching my adductors and holding that for 10 seconds. I put more time on the opening of the hip because that's where I'm the tightest. And I do 10 repetitions of those. Five second hold here, 10 second hold here. But today, I'm gonna be doing it for stability. That means not holding onto an object and just a split second pause in both the open and the close. Now I'm gonna be doing these unassisted without the support. Uh, here they're very difficult. So I'm gonna be trying to figure these out. And I really wish you guys weren't watching. It's be much better in privacy. Gosh, this is why we don't shoot my Warm ups. They're freaking embarrassing. Oh, whoa. Ah, oh, God. Man, you suck. What's the point of all those months of stability work if I can't even do a freaking hip, hip airplane? So, on a real note, uh, if you're starting off with the assisted ones, in the beginning it was even hard to do uh, 10 repetitions all the way through, so I had to split it up into two sets of five. So, if these are tough, feel free to take breaks. So I'm gonna actually just try to get through multiple sets of three. My goal is to get 10 total repetitions of the unassisted variation. Like, what am I supposed to do with my hands here? Oh wait, I'm supposed to be telling you guys what to do. That's one. Oh my gosh. Two, I'm an airplane. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's three reps. I'll do them on the other three on the left. They're a little easier with my arms out wide. Turn out, turn out. You're a ballerina. Point oh. those, those toes. Ah. Wow, the left is hard. The left is hard, okay. I'll get it, I'm gonna get it. Didn't even finish rep right there. Give me like, give me like 30 minutes, bro. Oh gosh, I just puked in my mouth a little bit. Dude, we're rolling. Oh gosh, okay, yeah, so anyways. Uh, those ones didn't feel so bad. I'm gonna finish up with uh, those three on my left leg. The goal is to get to just a total of 10 repetitions on each leg. Oh, oh, oh. 
Let's see. Easy. Okay. Oh, God, I finish this one up. Um, anyways, so going on to the next motion, after you guys saw me do those hip airplanes effortlessly, I'm doing something called hip banded mobilizations or banded hip mobilizations. And the idea here is to squeeze or activate the glutes, forcing the hip, fle hip, hip flexors to stretch as you push your hips forward and give your uh, pelvis a posterior tilt as you push forward. Three second hold, release. And a three second hold, 20 repetitions on each side. The goal here again, just to mobilize the hip. That will, because if your muscles are tight and you're trying to, let's say, extend in a squat, if uh, your hips are tight, you're gonna have to uh, flex or work against your own tightness to get that full extension. So the idea is that to uh, enforce or to um, promote your hips to glide smoothly into extension so you don't have to fight too hard for it. So ideally, you want to have a mat for your uh, knee to feel nice and cushioned. You want a nice thick band and a fire hydrant or some sort of pipe assembly to attach the rubber band to. Or a gym rack. Or just a gym rack. That's not as, it's not as cool. Now that I finished those banded hip mobilizations, I'm going to get down and do single leg hip bridges. This is ideal to get the full activation of the glute. The banded hip mobilizations, of course, did some of that, but this kind of finishes it off. And the goal again, just I, I do two sets of five repetitions, the 10 second hold on top, I'm trying to feel my glutes do most of the work rather than my hamstrings. So this I'm doing to help heal my hamstring by having my glutes take over more of the work the way they should be. So the goal in these bridges is to be able to push your hips through also more uh, higher and higher. I like to have my heel elevated just a little bit to make it a little bit easier and give myself more range of motion. And as my hips get more mobile, I'm able to push my hips through more and more. While you're doing this, you wanna keep your head, of course, on the ground and your spine neutral. You don't want to bow and arch your back. So keep your abs tight, everything in a straight line is ideal. The crazy thing is when I first started doing these two months ago, just doing a single leg hip bridge really flared up my hamstring and it was, it was pretty excruciating to get through a set. But now that I've been able to activate my glutes better, mobilize my hips better, I hardly feel my hamstrings at all while I'm doing this. It's, it's been really effective. Oh, it's rolling. Um, gosh, keep, keep running into that same problem. So next I'm gonna be doing touchdown squats. This is a precursor to pistols. I've been doing these for knee stabilization and VMO activation, adductor act activation, and just to flush blood into my ligaments and tendons to help heal my knee. So I have degenerated cartilage and a slightly torn meniscus. And gosh, these have been magical for helping me heal up my knees. Hoorah. All right, so when I first started these, I was only able to do these with one plate without pain. And uh, even then it was uh, hit or miss. Over the course of like two months, I've been able to build up these plates to uh, even go up to five plates. But I'm gonna start off with just the warm up of three plates. The goal is to squat down, touch the back heel on the floor without reaching or dipping your hips. That's very important. So I usually like to put a hand up here, make sure my thigh doesn't slide down my hand. And you wanna keep your body squared up with your squatting leg. And I just do 10 repetitions very slow, looking from the front, everything's squared up. Now this is a motion that Aaron Horshig from Squat University taught me, and I think it's been one of the best things I have done for uh, my rehab. So for touchdowns, when I first started these, um, I would do three sets of 10. And if my pain level was uh, one or less, I it was uh, at a green light to increase the height by a plate. If my pain level was two or higher, I had to drop down a plate. And uh, with recovery, it's never perfect. Some weeks I had to drop down a, a plate or even two sometimes because my knees were not having it. But overall, over the course of these uh, two months, 
I've been able to increase the height gradually and uh, decrease my pain, decrease my knee crackles, and just feel so much more stable and steady with my legs. So now that I warmed up my touchdown squats, instead of adding a plate, I'm actually gonna do another variation that's more difficult, uh, which is pushing my heel forward like so. This is more difficult because you have to squat down that much deeper to be able to touch your heel to the floor and also keep your adductors active to keep your legs close together. And this one's even more difficult to stabilize. So if you guys have a very easy time and you can work up to five plates with your leg behind you, you can then start the progressions towards a pistol squat with your leg in front. The thing is I actually have the ability to do a pit full pistol squat. However, it's been kind of painful. And also the quality of motion isn't quite where I want it. Um, with that said, today's gonna be the second day that I'm gonna actually be doing full pistol squats without this weird wonky variation stuff. So I'm just doing these touchdown squats as a warm up and I'll be getting into pistol squats. This here is Kristen. She's a very dear friend of mine and very dear to my heart. So right now, before I move on to do uh, full on pistols, I'm gonna mobilize my ankles. One of the biggest leading culprits to a bad pistol squat or any kind of squat is uh, tight ankles. So Kristen is a PTA student and she's very good at this kind of stuff. And uh, she has helped me, helped guide me through how to do this better because I was doing it wrong. All right, so. Martin's had his band on a little too high. And I was using a band that was too big. And it was too big. So I told him to put it lower. It goes under your ankle bones here. Mm -hmm. Nobody saw that. Nope, and nobody saw that. on your talus, your talus bone. And what Martin's is gonna do is a lunge while the talus is stabilized. So here. Forcing the cruel joint to go over the talus. And he can go back and forth a few seconds in, 10 times. So the wrong place would be above the ankle bones here, the malleoli. It's not even on the talus here. So really you're not, you're not doing anything but just compressing your skin here. I also like to personally like to push my knee out towards my uh, pinky toes just because I like to promote my, uh, my legs being able to open up during a squat. This is very valuable. Ankle, if you guys are having a difficult time getting uh, depth in a squat, then this, uh, ankle mobility might be your uh, culprit. This is gonna be my first time really pushing these pistol squats. Uh, last week, I just tested the waters of these, sent the video over to Aaron Horshig, who's my physical therapist, helping me through all of this. And he gave me the green light to incorporate these into my uh, actual routine. So three times a week, I'm gonna be doing pistol squats to further promote uh, quad strength, VMO strength, and stability. Oh boy, here we go. So I'm not gonna worry too much about depth right now. Just get down to about parallel, and over time, increase that depth. Again, without a heel lift, without an ollie shoe, getting that depth is very difficult. Oh my days. <sighs> How many sets? Oh my god, just two sets. <sighs> two sets of eight. Click. All right, this is gonna be interesting. So the theory here, guys, is, uh, Kristen was just explaining to me that um, we don't get full, uh, especially elite athletes, don't get full activation out of their muscles easily. You're using around 35% of your muscle activation. Um, well, the reason is the body likes to protect itself, especially if you have had injuries, the more the Golgi tendon organs uh, turn on, inhibit uh, signals in your brain to your muscles, just so you don't hurt yourself. So this is hopefully gonna bypass that, allowing greater activation of my quads during the pistol squat. So it's connected, yeah? I'll turn it up to like what, 10? Oh God, no, 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 ah! Ah! Okay, one more. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, so I can barely feel it now.
Oh, I did it. So that's really neat. I definitely feel more activation in my quads while I'm doing this with a little bit of an electric uh, pulse going through. That's cool. I'm excited to use that for more. No, don't go there. Stop, stop, stop. This is really neat. Uh, so this goes on the VMO. This goes on the lateralis uh, belly, muscle belly, just to get a uh, whole activation of the quad. This is really cool. After using it on my left leg, I feel like a tingle, a residual tingle in my left leg after having finished it. That's cool. Do you want me to activate it? So what level did we have last time? Four? Four. Let's do four again. Yep. That feels good. All right. I felt pretty good with depth. The set feels better than the last one. Okay, that was hard. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's the second set. Felt better than the first one. How was the depth? Fuck yeah. So. <laughs> Obviously these power dots are a really good addition to recovery and to get more activation on the muscles. Really excited to use them on my traps, my tricep, my lat to bring back innervation uh, from my damaged nerve. Hopefully that'll get my stuff firing up a little bit more on the right side. So it's something you could use every day, especially if you go on long trips or you sit, sit at work or you go on a long airplane ride. You could put this on for like an hour on a, on your legs and that will basically simulate almost the same muscular effects as walking. So even if you're sitting for a long period of time, it'll get that blood flow through and keep you healthier. It is not a replacement for movement, however. This should be in addition to. Movement is key, movement is king. Always focus on your mobility, stability, and increasing the quality that your body can move with. And we use this to help supplement or to help uh, enhance the effects of movement therapy. If you guys like what you're seeing and you want to try one of the power dots, check the link in the description. Use discount code MARTINS. Uh, I take it back. You can use the uh, power dot every day, but switch up the muscle groups you use it for. Uh, use it, if you're using it every day, it's mostly for recovery purposes, not necessarily pounding uh, to enhance strength. So don't use it on the same muscle group every day. Switch it up. So that concludes my leg rehab portion. Um, I, there are other motions I do on other days that are more for explosivity. Uh, today's uh, rehab or leg activations it was all uh, done to support uh, a leg workout or to prepare me to do squats that which I'm about to do now. There's also a whole upper body sequence I'm about to do right now, which is not going to be in the video, but uh, until next time, you guys will definitely see it. focus to not hurt my hamstring but no pain yeah. it was just the moment I started feeling it, I had to like squeeze my adductors so hard but painless almost just like maybe a one or two out of ten all right guys well I'm very happy finished my workout um, pistols are looking really good that was my first uh, the first day of like really attacking those 
great repetitions. Uh, squats felt good. My quads fired right up. Now the last little use I'm gonna uh, that I'm really excited for for this guy is um, getting rid of pain. It's for pain relief. I have a little bit of radiating nerve pain coming from my neck uh, from a nerve injury that I had uh, from last summer. Has been bugging me. It's been getting better, but it's very persistent. So I'm excited to use this on my traps, my neck, to uh, help ease up that area. So uh, awesome, awesome thing. Awesome little device. Very convenient. Uh, works really well. I really felt that in my quads. I mean, we weren't even blasting that anywhere near full power and I was, my, my leg was shaking. Um, so again, yeah, thank you so much, uh, PowerDot. I really appreciate the uh, device. I'm gonna use it plenty. And thank you for sponsoring this video. Hope you guys get one of yourselves and enjoy it. Now be sure to check the link in the description.